All right, I'd like to start off by saying Barak Te Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahu Shai, Ba'ashem Rucha Kodash. Welcome to another live lesson. Uh, the name of this one is Yet This Day in Our Captivity, which is a direct quote from the book of Baruch in the Apocrypha. And um, this video came through the inspiration of a video I was watching earlier uh, the brother you called the head of the uh, Arkansas camp and um, I forget he mentioned I believe he mentioned the word captivity or something along those lines and it just gave me the idea to do a lesson <clears throat> based off of you know that uh, particular topic um, so you know let me know if you can hear me you know let me know if how it sounds you know if I have to speak a little louder you know let me know uh, so pretty much like I said that was the the uh, all right cool that was the um, you know the the uh, inspiration for the uh, for the um, video and um, before I go to the main scripture where that quote comes from directly you know I want to uh, start off in the book of Isaiah the 51st chapter because this is another precept that came to mind uh, concerning captivity now before we get started let's go to the word captivity see let's see what that mean what what the word captivity means all right let's go back Okay, it's going to act like that. All right, no problem. Captivity. Okay. The word captivity is the state of being imprisoned. The state of being a slave. And to this very day, we are still slaves. You know, contractual slaves make physical slaves. Because once you don't have anything to pay those contracts bind you you know and this is why you know they both they, this is why they're pushing so hard on the MOTB the Karagma which will be the new financial way to um, maneuver in this society and everywhere you turn you know they're um, pushing that agenda digital currencies all over the world all over the globe you know which they want to have one centralized currency which eventually will be the MOTB which is the Karagma. So, when we start in the book of Isaiah 51 and 1, it says, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai. Look unto the rock whence you are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence you are digged. Yeah, because we have a cistern. Cistern meaning a like a well of water. And that cistern or that well of water comes directly from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And um, you have Israelites out there that are seeking other forms of water, you know, that are not from the wells of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, they're seeking implantation Christianity for the most part. A lot of them are leaving now because. They're not getting the answers that they need. The world is in turmoil. Uh, situations are getting bad. They're getting worse. And all they do in the church is just sing and dance. You know, make you feel good. But then once the, the uh, that demonic uh, procession is over, then you go right back to living, you know, this, this, uh, this uh, melancholic type life. Right, so that's why people are leaving. But those are the waters that they're drinking from. You know, Egyptology, the more the more science. You know, however that 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 uh, terminology goes, the more, um, you know, the uh, uh, Kemet, you know, uh, Islam, you know, and Jake. Some Jakes are so gone that they're going into the Baha'i faith. They're going into Hinduism, Buddhism, so on and so forth. You know. So, it says, Look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. 
for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For the, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. Yeah. And he will make her wilderness like Eden. So what we're, what's happening right now is we're going through a process of being, you know, cleaned up and prepared for the kingdom of heaven. You know, we're not always going to be in this low condition. You know, we were not created to be in this low condition. We were created to be royalty, Salakia. <laughs> we were created to be loyalty, um, Salakia, royalty. But because of our disobedience, you know, we came down to the to the to the bottom where we're at now. And the Lord is going to build us up like Eden, but He's also going to beautify our land also. All right. It says, and and her desert like the garden of the Lord, joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody, because the kingdom, I remember Elder Paul Sarah said this years ago, it's going to be like a never-ending long weekend. You know, when you have those four-day weekends, you know, starts on Friday and ends, you know, and you go, you you don't go back. You work Thursday, you don't work uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. That's a long weekend. So the kingdom of heaven is going to be like a long weekend, <laughs> a never-ending long weekend. It says, "Hearken unto me, my people." And give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. Right, and this is what's happening now. So we're receiving the decree of the Lord of what He's going to do for us in raising and building us up, and in the meantime, we're just we're being built up mentally, spiritually. It says, "My righteousness is near; my salvation is gone forth." And mine arms shall judge the people, the isle shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. Right, so we're going to trust in the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, pretty much is what that's saying. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke. Yeah, and that's that's the truth. Matter of fact, I, 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 Tzalaki, let me... Let me uh, I went, uh, started at the first verse, really supposed to start at the ninth verse, but that's all, it's, it's all good. It's a lot of good, you know, got a lot of good meat here. But, let me uh, jump up, let me uh, jump up to, uh, just bear me one second. Let me jump down to the ninth verse, should I say. To get to the heart of it. Okay, verse 9. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days. Right, because, you know, we need the salvation of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. We, This is not something we could do alone. You know, this is not something that we could take up arms against Esau and win a battle, a, a carnal battle. You know, that that's not going to happen. You know, we're waiting on Yahweh Bashem Yahushua to bring the spiritual war, which their spiritual war is going to be physical upon Esau. So we, we're asking the Lord as the prophets, as, you know, the great men of the Lord, for the Lord to raise up and awake, to put on strength and put on the arm of the Lord, you know, to come and deliver us. As in the ancient days, in the generations of old, art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Art thou not it? So like it for one second. Art thou not it? Which have dried the sea. Oh, oh, the waters of the great deep that have made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over. Look, man, Moses didn't part the water, he didn't part the Red Sea. We were just getting at them. We were we were cursing them out. That that lunatic. The Lord parted the Red Sea, man, and we walked on dry ground. You know? Anyways. It says, therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return. Yeah, because the Lord has a ransom. He has the, the ransomed. He has the redeemed that are going to turn to the Lord, which are the elect. Because not all Israel is going to make it out in this time. Because when you go back to Egypt, the Lord delivered all the Israelites out of Egypt. But in this time, he's only going to deliver the elect. And come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their head. 
It says, they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. And that's what we're waiting for, because we're still in sorrow and mourning. You know, even though we know what's coming, there's times where that spirit of depression comes upon us, you know. You know, you feel down and out, you know. Why? Because we're still in hell. You know, we're still here. And, and we have the vision from the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, of the kingdom and the world to come. You know, and but we're still here, so we're we're saddened by that. But we know that the Lord is still going to come and deliver us. It says, "I even I am He that comforted you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die?" <laughs> Maybe we should pull out this scripture. This is a comforting scripture. It says, "And of the Son of Man, which shall be made as grass." Right, because you know, no matter what Esau does, he's not going to be able to destroy the elect. He may get some of them because that's the way the Lord set it up for them to glorify him. But he's not going to get all of the elect. Because they are the elect and they're going to be delivered. And the elect of the nation of Israel is how the Heavenly Father is going to exalt and magnify his name. Like he did during the time of Egypt. Because that's when the Lord's name, Yahweh, was magnified. Because it was known. It wasn't well known. Alashaja was more known back then, but the name Yahweh was known. And then when he delivered us out of the land of Egypt, that's why he gave Moses his name, Yahweh. That's when that name was fully exalted and became famous. So the Lord is going to make his name famous again in the earth. That's why it's important to keep preaching and teaching those names and exalting those names as much as possible. And forget us, the Lord thy maker that have stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and has feared continually even uh, I'm sorry has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor right because what you see what you see happening what Esau is doing that's the fury of the oppressor because remember Esau is the hand of the Lord he's using these devils to chasten uh, chasten Jake out here in these streets I got to get back to these streets where I'm from. Ooh, turkey job, whatever that dude said. Uh, this is Psalm 17 and 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So the wicked, they are the sword of the Lord. You know, this is who the Lord set up to be his whipping stick. So King David, I believe this is King David. Yep. He's praying to the Lord to deliver us from the hand of the wicked which back then you know Esau wasn't in power you know Esau was in subjection under King David you know so he's talking about in these days today Esau you know now you had King Saul back then which was considered the wicked back then which you know some of these scriptures apply to him but it's really speaking uh, in the future tense prophetically of today and the things that we're going through today and the, the uh, hand or the fury of the oppressor that is upon us all because we're all still here. Yet this day in our captivity. It says, um, Arise, O, I'm sorry, from men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure, they are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. Right. So we, we are still this day under or suffering under the hand of the uh, oppressor, the fury of the oppressor. As if he were ready, this is back in uh, Isaiah 51 and 13 towards the end. As if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? Why? Because the Lord is going to rip Esau off of the, he's going to take Esau off, off the earth. You know, after he suffers uh, that captivity. But prior to that, he's going to take his kingdom and his rulership away from him you know so where's the fury of the oppressor going to be then so it says the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed and this is the point the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed we are the captive exile and this is why we read the, the uh, definition for the word captivity which is the state of being imprisoned the state of being a slave and when you look up the word captive, right, the word captive is a person who is confined, especially a prisoner of war. And that's pretty much what we are. We are POWs, prisoners of war. 
you know um let's see a person held nope that's not it being in captivity so pretty much a person who is confined especially a prisoner of war now when we look up the word exile because we are prisoners of war the word exile is a person who is voluntarily absent from home or country a person who was expelled from home or country by authority and that's what happened you know Esau ripped us out of the land uh, and pretty much this is the one right here number three the act of expelling a person from their native land because we are not in our land you know we are in our enemy's land which used to be Gad's land uh, Reuben's land you know Issachar's land but they took it from from uh, from them just like they took the rest of the world from the people and planted, planted themselves as the people of that particular land. You know, if you, leave, you, you let these devils continue to rule, before you know it, the Native American Indians were all white people. You know? The Reubenites will be all white people. The Issacharites will be all white people. You let this devil rule long enough. So, when we look up this word captive exile, which is one word, we look up captive exile in the book of Isaiah 51, and 14 the word captive exile which is one word is a uh, uh, tazai to stoop bend incline to stoop bend to incline tip to tip over um, the purpose of spilling or pouring out right because we were poured out of our land that is uh, figuratively depopulate so we've been depopulated from our land. That's why you really don't have that many Israelites in that land. Because once uh, the Babylonians came in and different nations, we, we started to be scattered, which Elder Pastor just did a lesson on scattered. Um, the last time when we were actually in our homeland was go going back during the time of the Roman Empire, which them devils beginning in 66 AD, uh, all the way to about around 74 AD pretty much expelled us out of that land especially in 70 AD that's when we were totally removed out of our land and Jake hasn't really been there since it wasn't until the 60s when Ben Ami you know uh, brought back Israelites over there that Jake started to get back into that land although you have Israelites among the Palestinians you have Israelites among the small hats you know because Israel scattered among all nations you know, so we're captive exiles. It says uh, depopulate by implication to imprison or conquer. So we've been conquered to lie down. Right, and the word lie down, uh, kotan, which is uh, uh, for kotan or something, I forget the pronunciation, pretty much is for sex. You know, and captive exile, traveling. So there's different, um, different definitions for, you know, for different scriptures. You know, and uh, depending on the uh, on the uh, context, okay. So now let's go back. Let's read that again. Uh, Psalm, I'm sorry, Isaiah 51 and 14. The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. And that's pretty much where we're at with it. You know, we're hastening to to come out of this place, and that's why our whole mindset. If your mindset is not you know, hoping and wishing for this uh, society to collapse and for the kingdom of heaven to be established, then you ain't in the right spirit. You know, you ain't in the right spirit. And chances are you're not a part of the elect. Because your whole mindset being here should be wanting to get the hell out of here. Uh, this is um, 2 Peter 3 and 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dis dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So we should be hastening the destruction of this place so that the Lord can come and deliver us and remove this foul, filthy, wicked spirit and this wicked uh, society out of here once and for all. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Because obviously, if we're looking for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, the, the heaven and the earth that we're in now is not dwelling in righteousness. So going back, let's read this again. Isaiah chapter 
uh, 51 and 14, the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy power that divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. So Yahweh is the Most High's name. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Which Yahweh is the Most High's name. Yah is he, how wise to be, or he exists. He to be, or he exists. And you have Yahweh Shai, which is his son. Yah is he, how Shai is deliverer or savior. He is the deliverer or he is the savior. Those are the names to be exalted, beginning with the Most High's name. So how can we exalt and praise the Lord's name if we don't have that name? Think about it. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. So right now what's happening is the Lord is planting his, his uh, uh, noble vine. He's planting it once again. What was this, What is the seed? The word is the seed. That's why right now the gathering of the elect, of the plant, chosen plan of the Lord is coming through this word. So wherever Israelites are at and this word is being spoken and they're listening and they're hearing and they accept it, that means that they are Israelites. Some of them are elect and some of them are not. So the Lord is planting the heavens right before the eyes of the world by putting this word inside of them. Because the word is the seed according to Luke. So it's, it's being planted in every mind of the Israelites all over the planet, whether they accept it or not. Because if they don't accept it, they'll be destroyed. If they accept it, they'll be delivered. You know, I might have to back up over here because, you know, a little close to the... Let me just back. Just bear with me one second. Just wanted to come here, you know, next to the water, but... Cool. I wanted this actually wanted to go to a to a bench, but it's a little it's a little on the chilly side. All right, so so lucky like for that. So let's get back to it. Let me put this back up here. Let's get let's get set back up. All right. So the Lord is planting this this truth. He's, he's planting his kingdom. The kingdom begins with the word. The kingdom are the people. That's why the Apostle John saw New Jerusalem come down from heaven. It was an actual building that he saw, but it was a representation of the Israelites being established once again in beauty. That's why the next chapter after this, after the 51st chapter says, you know, awake, awake, put on thy strength, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. Because the Lord is beautifying us now, you know, but he's not like he's going to beautify us then because we have to be changed in order to really fully you know, we had to transmogrify. <laughs> we had to be transformed, you know, from these vile bodies into our new bodies so that the laws can be put into our inward parts. And then you're going to see a whole total different vibe, you know. Then it's, then it's going to be on, like Donkey Kong. All right, so now let's go from there. Let's go to the book of Psalms, the 126th chapter. I love this, this, uh, this chapter. It says a whole lot. It's very short, but it says a whole lot. It's six verses long. Psalms 126 and 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Right. So this is going to be like a nightmare once the Lord delivers, uh, delivers us out of this captivity. And the captivity is where we are all throughout the planet. Remember, it says that in uh, Jeremiah 16 and 14 on down. You know, and also in the twenty-third chapter, that the Lord, you know, He's going. He, it's going to be uh, said that the Lord delivered us from the land of the north and from all the lands where we have been scattered. So this is what's happening now, but it's happening with the word right now. When Yahweh Shai comes back with the chariots, He's going to gather the elect from the four winds of the heavens and bring the elect back down once they're changed into His uh, to His likeness, and then from that point on the whole earth is going to be set back into its proper order. It's going to be under a righteous vibration. You know, and we're going to have to go around establishing the righteousness of the Lord throughout the planet earth. Setting everything back up in its proper order. You know? It says, Then was our, was our mouth filled with laughter 
and our tongue with singing. Yeah, because the scripture said, when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. But when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So even the nations, once Esau goes down, they're going to rejoice. The trees are going to rejoice. The animals are going to rejoice. You know? The, the sea life is going to rejoice. The birds are going to rejoice when this devil goes down. So it says, Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. Yep. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Yeah, because you're going to have the actual heathens, they're going to actually, once the kingdom is established and they go through their punishment, they're going to actually, you know, be... Or have to learn our ways. And everything is going to be perfect. You know? But prior to that, they have to uh, deal with their punishment. And then you have Israelites that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. That, that are going to be uh, also um, delivered. Oh, Lord. It says, uh, don't, don't mind me. I'm just thinking out loud. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the stream in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Right. So we're, we're going through what we're going through, but we're going to reap in joy. You know, we're going to be magnified once again. The, the sorrows that we have are going to be taken away. The scriptures say that the Lord is going to wipe away all tears. You know? So it says, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. Bringing his sheaves with him, right? Because the sheaves is the representation of peace. You know, so the Lord is going to give us peace once again. All right, so now let's go from there to the book of Baruch in the Apocrypha. Let's go to the book of Baruch, the third chapter. We're going to read a couple of verses in there. Because this is actually the uh, uh, one of the scriptures that came to mind. I couldn't At first I couldn't find it. And I figured it had to be in the Apocrypha. The point is in the 8th verse We're going to start at 1 Baruch 3 and 1 O Lord Almighty, power of Israel The soul in anguish, the troubled spirit Crieth unto thee Yeah, and we are in trouble And our spirits are troubled You know, like uh, like um, The older men Gave the uh, um, Absalom Counsel and said You know that your father, you know he be He's a chaste man and the men that are with him are chaste in the spirit. You know? So it says, Hear, O Lord, and have mercy, for thou art merciful, and have pity upon us, because we have sinned before thee. For thou endurest forever, and we perish utterly. O Lord Almighty, thou power of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. And every time Israel dies, they go back before the Father, and they accuse this devil to his, to, uh, they accuse this devil of the wickedness that he's doing. Whether they themselves were righteous or not When they were here on the earth It says And of their children Which have sinned before thee Because you don't All the shit that you devils have done you don't, You're not going to get away with it I mean you think you're going get to away, get away with it Because you've gotten away with it for so long That's why it says um, Because sentence against the evil work Is not executed speedily It is set in the hearts of men to do evil continually Or something along those lines You know But the Lord said he's not going to acquit the wicked so you've, you've um, gone unchecked, you know, unpunished for so long that you thought the Most High was like you. It, sa it says it in Psalms, uh, I believe it's the 50th chapter, you know. You thought that the Most High was with you because the Lord, we're, here, here it is, we're the people of the Lord. And you've done what you've done to our people for hundreds of years, for centuries. And you haven't been judged for it yet. But remember, the Heavenly Father is long-suffering. It says, and not hearken unto the voice of thee, their power. For the which cause these plagues cleave unto us. Remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. Right, so how can we think upon the Lord's name at this time without having the actual name? It says, for thou art the Lord our power, and thee, O Lord, I will praise or will, I, or will we praise? And for this cause thou hast put thy fear in our hearts to the intent that we should call upon thy name. So how can we call upon the Lord's name if we do not have the Lord's name? And bottom line, when these guys 
make a mockery of the Most High's name, or they don't call on the name, you know, they uh, take the name lightly, it's because they have no fear of the Lord, you know, and of his mighty power. That's why they do what they do. It says, and praise thee in our captivity. So how can we praise thee and exalt his name if we don't have those names? It says, for we have called to mind, for we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. Now here goes the point. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So up until this day, very day right now, what's today? March, uh, March of 2022. Uh, let's see. March 22nd, 2022. The year of, of the, the Yahweh Bashem El Shai turning up. So to this very day, we're still in our captivity. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We are where thou hast uh, scattered us. Yep, there we go. Thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. See? We've been a reproach and a curse among these nations. And no other nation fits those curses. When you go throughout the different cities of the world, you know, Israel is the only ones or are the only ones that are suffering these curses. That's it, bar none. So wherever you go in the world <coughs> and you see ghettos or, <coughs> or slums or barrios or favelas or shanty towns or whatever they called in whatever language they may be, those are Israelites. Because the Israelites are the ones that were, that were brought very low <coughs> for our, our, our iniquities. So let's read that again. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity <coughs> where thou hast scattered us. For a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments. And that's why we have bills to pay. You know, and if you lose your job, the bills don't stop coming. So you know what? Let's give him a break. You know, he, he lost his job. Let's give him a break. Um, let's give him, you know, two or three months, you know, so he can get back on his feet. So we don't send, we won't send him any bills. No, man, them bills keep coming. Because we are subject to payments. And that's a part of our curse. Because back then we weren't subject to payments. I mean, we dealt with each other. You know, and sometimes Jake would fall, you know, to poverty and stuff. But for the most part, we wasn't, you know, um, paying tribute to any other nation until we fell under those nations. It says, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our power. That's right. And that's why we fell as a nation. Now, let's go from there. Let's go back to the book of Isaiah. Okay. Okay. Go back to the book of Isaiah. This time we're going to go to the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter. So we're at the end of our captivity, but we're still here. We're still um, catching hell. And we're hastening the day of the Lord so that the Lord could come and deliver us. Bottom line. So Isaiah 41, it says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, save your power. And this is why we go out in the streets. This is why through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem El Shai, we do these lessons, you know, because these words are supposed to be a comfort to Jake. Some will accept it, most will not. Because this is the refreshing way where you may cause the weary to be to be you know to be at rest. But most Jakes are not gonna accept it. Because this gives us hope. You know, this gives us the blueprint of not only are we catching hell? Not only are we at the bottom, you know, going through all these different things, but it gives us the reasons why. We understand why. And we see that there's hope. The problem with Jake and the world is that they see no other remedy but for them to try to make a better life for themselves because they don't have the understanding that we're in this condition because we went off. So the Lord got us under curses, you know, and eventually the Lord's going to deliver us. And that's where the hope lies. Because if you if you are a person that's in a in a bad uh, spot in a bad situation, and there's no way out, and you become hopeless, then pretty much you're just you're just miserable all of the days of, of your life, you know. Because you see no hope. The, uh, there's a movie called The Count of Monte Cristo, and uh, it, the individual uh, Edmund Dantes, you know, he was sentenced to prison wrongfully. And uh, when he was in prison, it's called the Chateau d'If. And that place was hell. You know, there were, you know, men after a while lost all hope of getting out of there. Because they would pretty much bring them there and just leave them there. 
And the ones that were locked up in that particular one was because they did the right thing, but the rulers couldn't have it because they had information that can destroy them. So that's why they would lock them up in there. So after a while, you know, the, the men have had hope, but after a while they lost, they lost their hope because there was no way to get out of there. You know, so he got out of there and, you know, did, did what he did, you know. Um, you could watch the movie. But the point is that when when you're in a bad spot, in a bad situation, and you see no way out of it, and you see no hope, and you're not expecting anything, you know, you're, you, you become, you know, uh, uh, you just pretty much just accept it and just think that that's just the way it's got to be, you know? And, and then you try to better your life. See, with this thing, with, with the truth, you know, the truth has given us the whole blueprint of why we're in this condition. The reason why we came to this to, to this position, because we're suffering a punishment. But then there is hope because the punishment is just about up. And once the punishment is up, there is going to be a reward on the backside of that. You know, so that's where the hope comes in. Something to hold on to, something to look forward to. That's what the scriptures say, that the, the, the scriptures are the comforter, you know. So it says, um, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, save your power. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. And there's a precept there for warfare. Uh, let's see. Her warfare is accomplished. That's number two. Verse two. Verse two. Uh, appointed time, right? Her warfare is accomplished. So her appointed time is accomplished. So everybody, time and chance happens to all men. You know, there's a time and purpose for everything that is done under heaven. You know, we're in our captivity to this day, but we're coming to the end of it. And there's going to be an end. And once once uh, it's over, it's over. All right? As a matter of fact, did I write that down? All right, yeah. So those are we going to get to that. So let's go. It says, Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare or her time, appointed time, is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And that's what we what we're speaking about, what we're talking about. That that our our you know the time of our of our affliction is come to an end. You know? Now let's go from there to Habakkuk. And this is where the hope lies. This, and, and that's why the scriptures say, hope deferred, naked the heart sick. Because if you don't have no hope, you become hopeless, then there's nothing for you to hold on to. There's no anchor. You just, you'll be just like a ship that's, that's being tossed to and fro by the waves in the sea that has not anchored down. That lost their oars, that lost the, the, uh, the, um, the propeller and all that stuff, you know, the governor or whatever that it's called, you know? And you're just out there at, at you know, uh, um, um, at the mercy of the sea because you have because you have no hope so that anchor is gone you know so hope is an anchor you know so Nahum chapter 1 I'm sorry not Nahum Habakkuk chapter 1 and uh, verse 12 let's start at 12 uh, it says art thou not from everlasting O Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahushai my power mine holy one we shall not die right O oh Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment, right? Because Esau was set up for judgment. They brought punishments upon us, but also ultimately they're going to be judged, right? Thou hast ordained them for judgment, and almighty power, thou hast established them for correction. And that's why Esau was put in the position that they were in. The fury of the oppressor, the fury of the Lord was upon Esau, you know, because they were set up for correction. To judge us. So that's the most high whipping stick whipping us. You know, now he's got now he's comforting us. He said it's gonna be alright, you know, I'm gonna take care of you, you know, I'm, I'm gonna raise you back up out of that situation. Thou art of purer eyes and to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devour of the man that is more righteous than he? See? 
So why are you holding your tongue? Why are you allowing these devils to do what they do? Well, the Lord has a purpose, and, and you know, and that purpose is, you know, that the Lord is is uh, bringing judgments. You know, Jacob's trouble has to happen, and Jacob, and you ain't really seen nothing yet. You seen these devils, these cops killing Jake, you know, left, right, and center. You know, you've seen all kind of in injustices being done to, to uh, uh, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, the rest of the tribes. But you really ain't seen nothing yet. The Lord, the Lord is about to let this devil let his horns hang out, you know, and really, and really show, you know, why, why he's called the devil. <laughs> it says, and make his men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them. Yeah, because eventually when, when, when uh, a king is killed, the men... Just you know, they 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 are uh, they disperse, you know. A Ronin being a, a, a masterless samurai, you know. I mean, I I had looked that up before, you know. I knew that he had lost his master, but we were just recently talking about it. Pastor mentioned masterless samurai, which you know that's the perfect analogy. You know, they're just rogue. They're just going wherever, you know. So when the Lord brings destruction upon these devils, they they're gonna be dispersed. It says they take up all of them with the angle. They catch them in their net and gather them into their drag. Therefore, they rejoice and are glad, right? Because the, the drag and the net and all that is what? It's all of these different traps that are set up in this society. That's why I said that the captive exile hastened that he may be loosed. Because the, the, the deception of this man, the way he set it up was everybody pretty much is a slave, you know, under contract. And people think that they're free because... The, the uh, Constitution said uh, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall, shall um, occur in the United States or something along those lines. So people think that they're free because they haven't volunteered themselves to be slaves. But you have volunteered yourself to be a slave, beginning with your mother, you know, and that signed that birth certificate, your, your social security card, your license, uh, your license, and every other contract that you made with this government. That... Uh, um, Binds you to the to the um, the uh, stipulations of that contract, which makes you a slave. We all slaves, right? It says, therefore they sacrifice unto their net and burn incense unto their drag, because by them their portion is fat and their meat is plenteous. And you best believe that they do witchcrafts and seances and all that and incantations, you know, and they and they praise their their whole um, agenda. You know, as being as as being the thing that that uh, helped them to get what you know, they praising their gods, their false gods, for this, not knowing that it's the heavenly Father that's allowing them to go. But so far, it says they shall therefore empty their net and not spare continually to slay the nations. You know, and e and Esau can never have enough. I mean, you see that. Here it is. You would think that by now these devils would be content. And could go somewhere, you know, retire and live, you know, the rest of their life, whatever. No, they still, they still sticking it to the people. Within the last two years, these devils have, have like doubled or tripled their, their, their riches. You know, off of the backs of the middle class and the poor, because they just they want to get rid of the middle class so that they, you only have the super rich and the super poor, and that's what this whole situation is about. You know, there's shortages and everything that you see going on around the world. All right. These different sanctions. So let's go back to um, Isaiah 51. Let's go back to Isaiah 51. And 17. It says, Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Right, so now it's time for us to get uh, beautified back, built back up. The Lord broke us down. Now he's building us back up. I um, believe that's in uh, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. And there's another one. I can't think of it right now. Uh, that's uh, Hosea 6. Another one is Hosea 6 and 1. The Lord broke us down. Now he's binding us back up. Thou hast drunk in the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. So we drank. We, we were gulping it every day, huh? <laughs> you know? We drank that. We drank this, man. So now these devils got to drink it. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she has brought forth. Why? Because you have a lot of Jakes out there that are sellouts. Even among the Israelites that woke up and know that they're Israelites. 
You know? It says, Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she hath brought, brought up. Right. Because no one was able to lead because we were all scattered. These two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? <laughs> so those are your choices of comfort. When Jacob's trouble comes, that's going to be your choice of comfort. You know, and, and the, the, for, for one, somebody out there that's not a part of the elect, it's best for them to get the sword. Get it over with quick. Because hunger and, you know, all that, you know. It says, thy sons have fainted. They lie in the head of all the streets as a wild bull in the net. And you see Jake hanging out in the corners, acting a fool, shooting and killing each other. You know, that's a direct curse out of the scriptures. We just read that. You know, Edomites never, ha I mean, they're doing it now, but they didn't hang out in the streets like that. They weren't in the ghettos on the corners, talking shit, smoking blunts, smoking fillies, you know, uh, you know, whatever, uh, black and mild, tandem, whatever the fuck, you know, cigarettes, free basin, shooting drugs, whatever, selling drugs. These devils are ne never did that before. That's talking about Jake in the so-called ghettos, in the hood. It says, they are all full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy power. And that's why you're out there, because the Most High was angry with us. That's why we had to go through what we went through. But we're at the end of this. That's why it says for us to comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Tell her that her warfare is accomplished. The appointed time for us to, to suffer is come to an end. You know, we just got to get through this Jacob's trouble, and then the kingdom of heaven will, be, will come. Once they, they implement the MOTB, you know, which is the Karagma, and this World War III breaks out, it's over. It says, therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. What were we afflicted and drunken with? Afflicted and drunken with the strokes and the blows of the Heavenly Father, through the fury of the oppressor, Esau, and the other nations. It says, thus saith the Lord, the Lord and thy power, that pleaded the cause of, of, of his people, Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. So the, what you see us going through, that's the cup of the fury of the Lord. You know, thou shalt no more drink it again. So now before we read the next verse, let's go from there to Nahum. Nahum. Chapter 1. Verse 9. What do you imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. So affliction is not going to rise up the second time. It ain't going to... No more captivity after this. It's over. You know? Once Esau and the nations go down, that's it. It's not going to be any more, oh, well, you know, they put us in captivity, so we're going to put them in captivity and then... When they get the upper hand, you know, they're going to come back and they're going to, you know, get, they're going to be looking and say, yeah, they're falling. We're going to get them. Right, we got them. Ah, nah, none of that bullshit. Once it's over, it's over. Um, Just bear with me one second. I'm looking for this one precept. Uh, this is 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse, verse uh, 10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them. So the Lord, we're, we're about to receive this. That they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Because no more will we lose our kingdom ever again. Which is Yahweh Shai's kingdom, Yahweh Bashem Shai's kingdom slash Israel's kingdom. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. So there's going to be no more Edomites jumping up. To, to, uh, to, to take us back down. You know, after they served a thousand years of hardcore captivity, they're going to be rounded up, burnt up, and, and uh, sayonara, you know? You know, uh, 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 Arriva Derchi, motherfucker, you know? Excuse my medieval French, my Swahili. All right, now let's go from there to the book of Obadiah. 1 and 15, us, uh, um, yeah, 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. 
as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall the heathen drink continually. So your reward is going to return back upon your own head. And you're going to drink continually. From can't see in the morning to can't see at night. Excuse me. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down. Just bear with me one second. They shall drink and they shall swallow down or sup up. And they shall be as though they had not been. So what does that mean? Eventually you're going to be done away with, period. Like, like, like dung when you flush it down the toilet. But when you go into captivity, you're going to be a nobody. Anyone that is a slave is a nobody. You don't have a status. Your status is your master's status. You know, whatever he has is his. You just, you just work for him. You have no standing. You have no, no rights. So you devils are going to suffer the same, the same thing. Now let's go from there to the book of Revelation 13. Some basic fundamental building block scriptures. Revelation chapter 13 and verse, we're going to go straight to the point, verse 10. Revelation 13 and 10. It says, he that leadeth into captivity or slavery shall go into captivity or slavery. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Not possibly, not maybe, not, you know, have a counsel to see if, you know, if we could give, you know, give him clemency. No. The Lord said he will not at all acquit the wicked. So if you lead in captivity, you're going to go into captivity. When you look at the, this is why you got something called critical race theory. Because they're trying to erase that because they know that according to the Bible, the scriptures say that if you lead somebody into slavery, you're going to go into slavery. And it's undeniable. The proof, you know, the evidence is overwhelming that you put the so-called Negroes in captivity. That you put the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, indigenous peoples of the, these lands from Canada all the way down to South America in captivity. And there's and it's overwhelming evidence that you slayed and you killed all of them. Not all of them, I'm saying as far as all, all the tribe. You killed different individuals of the different tribes. So guess what? That's what's coming upon you. And then it says, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. This is the anchor. The patience and the faith of the saints. That's why it says the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed. Why? So that we can get the chance or the opportunity to take our enemies and to, and to give and pay them back for what they did to us. It's only right, baby. Psalms 149 and 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds, the kingdom of heaven. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth, which is the truth, and a two-edged sword in their hand, which is a killing instrument, to execute vengeance upon the heathen. All you devils going down, every last one of you. You know? And you Edomites, you're going to have company of the other nations, because they're going to get it too. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. And that's what, we, what we're waiting for. That's why it says that captive exile hasten him that he may be loose and that he should not die in the pit. This is a goddamn pit, man. This whole system is a pit. And it drowns Israelite, especially the Israelite men. It drowns them. With over much sorrow. With injustices. With killings. Imprisonments. It says to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So beginning with your elite, you know, your, the, the top banking families, the top rulers of all the different nations, those are going to be the first uh, crop of slaves when, when the kingdom of heaven is established. To execute upon them the judgment written. When you execute something upon somebody, you know, you're exacting it. You're bringing it upon them. You're putting it into action. This honor have all his saints praise you the Lord. So if you don't want that, you got problems. You got issues. You got situations. Because that's what's promised to the saints of the Most High. This is what we're waiting for. You know, this bitch can't go down fast enough. You know, in our opinion. But we know that the Lord, you know, has... has you know everything set up the way he wants it uh, to go, and the time where he wants it to go. You know, 
But if it was up to us, this devil would go down today, yesterday, last year. But the Most High is bound by his words. So let's go from there. Let's go to Deuteronomy 30. Got a couple more precepts and then we'll close it out. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 7. And the Lord thy power will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. So my suggestion to you, Vocab Malone, the Edomite, you know, and the rest of you devils out there, just go to the book of Deuteronomy 28 from the 15th verse down to the 68th verse. Read those curses and that's, what, that's what's coming for you. Double. So how do you like them apples? All right, uh, Lamentations 4. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. So live it up, man. Whoop it up. That dwellest in the land of Uz, the cup also shall be passed through unto thee. What cup is that? Slavery. And you're going to gulp it down, man. You're gonna you're gonna drink, forcibly drinking. You ain't gonna want to, but you're gonna drink. <laughs> Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. Yeah, so you're gonna you're gonna be drunken, you're gonna make yourself naked, meaning you're gonna be exposed totally. You know? I was watching um The Last Kingdom, and there was a scene. Where they had, uh, I'm not sure if they were Scottish or what they were, but they had them in captivity. They had just, you know, uh, defeated their army. And they were marching the men in. I believe they were all chained up, but they were all butt naked. And that's how they, they, they would humiliate uh, a nation. You know, after they conquered them, their valiant men, they would strip them down butt naked. You know, and lead them into captivity. You know, and that's a shameful thing. That's why uh, the, the two men of King David, when the Ammonite king had, had you know, cut their garments all the way down the, the halfway and shaved half of their beard off, that, that, was a sh that was shameful. You know? So it says, um, The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom, he will discover thy sins. So we're coming to this point now. You know, the uh, um, um, affliction shall not rise up the second time. Uh, what else we got? All right. The last precept is back in uh, Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51 and the last verse, which is the 23rd verse. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have, shed, uh, which have said to thy soul, bow down. So all of these curses... Everything that we've gone through is going to be turned over and put on Esau now. The Lord said he will not at all acquit the wicked. But, it, it, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may go over, and thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as a street to them that went over. Right. So we were pretty much at the, at the low point. The scripture said that they shall be the head and we're going to be the tail. You know? So these devils, they, they done did their thing. You know, they, they put us in, in a low state. They plan on, uh, on, on uh, bringing this uh, last onslaught upon the, those that fear the Lord. You know, but the Lord is going to deliver us out of that. You know, it's going to come a point somehow, some way. Matter of fact, let's close out with this. That the Lord is going to deliver us. We don't know how it's going to be. But we know that the Lord is going to do it. Just like he did to many of our forefathers. They found themselves in, in impossible situations. And the Lord came through and delivered them. So this is uh, the book of Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. We're in the western hemisphere. All right. And his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy, which is Esau, their military, shall come in like a flood. Like they did during the time of 70 AD. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up an, uh, a standard against them. So something is going to happen. The Lord is going to intervene with you know, uh, the, these devil's plans. You know, whether it be angels that appear, whether it be a, 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 a visible force field that comes around the elect, whether a chariot appears, you know, and separates 
you know, the, the elect from Esau and the other nations, like it did during the time of Egypt. We don't know exactly how it's going to happen, whether the Lord is going to open up the earth and, and cause them to fall down in there when they're trying to come against the elect. We don't know how it's going to go down, but we know that the Lord is going to do it because he promised it, you know? So pretty much, you know, uh, the name, like I said, the name of the lesson is Yet This Day in Our Captivity. And that's where we're at. We're in our captivity this day, you know, and we're looking and hastening to be loosed out of this captivity because the sooner this devil goes down, the sooner we can come up. You know, the scriptures say, um, rejoice, you know, ye uh, apostles and holy brethren or something like that in the book of Revelation 18. You know, for the Lord has avenged you on her. So as we see this bitch going down, we're supposed to be happy because the Lord is avenging us on these devils, you know? And we're seeing these devils go down and these devils being destroyed, you know? So we should be rejoicing. We shouldn't be uh, down and out. We shouldn't be depressed. We should be happy as hell, you know? Especially the, the, the closer uh, um, it gets for this devil to go down. So with that, you know, I pray that you brothers and your few sisters ha uh, have been edified. Until the next time I say Shalom.